Hello, drum fans. Hello. We are going to try this old podcast thing. So, uh, I'm Chris. I'm Adam. Uh, we work in Scotland's largest drum shop. Soon to be UK's largest drum franchise. Oh, there you are. Well, did you, you heard hear, it here first. Did you? Um, yeah, we are drummers only, uh, formerly Rhythm Bass. We have been in Glasgow for 13 whole years. And Leeds for about three months. Yes. I have been here predominantly for 13 whole years. Adam's been here nearly one. Nearly one. One whole year. There's still time. They can still kill me off. Well, they're not. no one's going to kill you off. I mean, there may be a drumstick royale version uh, for your job. You know, the general public would probably kill to work here. I mean, that's true. See, before I worked here, yes. I always wanted to work here. Well, that's good to know. And has it lived up to your expectation? In many ways, Christopher, <laughs> it has. And in a lot of ways, I've been surprised. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's perhaps the most diplomatic answer anybody could give to a question. It is. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a diplomatic person. We've got a new Prime Minister. We do. Oh, yeah, that happened today. Do you know what happened today? What happened? The police came in. They did? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I went to get the car. I came back into the shop and two bobbies were here. There was a wagon parked outside. I thought someone was in trouble. To translate for everyone else who's outside of <laughs> center, the central belt of Glasgow, a bobby is a police well, that officer. Was London slang. That was. That, is it? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That translates. Is it? Yes. Really? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. How sure are you? One hundred and five percent. That's. More, more than sure. More than the allocated amount. <laughs> <laughs> um, regardless of my sureness and the translation at hand, two police officers were in the shop. Why were they in the shop? Well, at first I thought they were finally coming to arrest Gordon. <laughs> I thought that's it. He's finally been caught. Um, I don't know. I kind of... So, to let everyone else understand, Gordon is currently down the front with... Uh, uh, Jeff Davenport. Jeff, Jeff Davenport, Davenport is the, was uh, the guy who did the remo tuning days. He knows so much about drum heads and so much about sonar drums. He's probably forgotten more about both of those things than either of us will ever learn in our life. True. Uh, he's very smart. Um, but he now works for a lighting company, so that excites Gordon very much. Yes. But anyway, uh, yeah, I came back and two police officers were here too. But they were looking at electronic kits, I believe. They were. So one of the police officers' son has actually entered Future Beat before. Oh, wow. Um, his name escapes me, so I'm because I'm terrible with names, Chris. Okay. Um, I forget my own name sometimes. It's it's okay. Okay, Adam. Thanks. You're welcome. I appreciate that, <laughs> homeboy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So they came in just for a just for a browse. One okay. of them, the boy who formerly used to play a snare drum in a marching band, uh, he now plays guitar. But came in to see what we've got going on drum wise. Well, there you go, serving the police of our country. Because they serve us very well. There you go. So this never is kind of um, a new venture for us, eh? We've never really done... We've done media. Have you done anything like this before? The closest I've come to doing this is... I I did some interview things with some, like... Like, really good local players who have been pals of the shop for a long time. Um, so I, we would go out, we would get some food, we would record an interview, and I would spend five years transcribe and said interview because it takes a long time to dis- to transcribe 90 minutes of audio. It does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like a week. Aye. It, it takes. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's no, by no means a one night job. I had like. um, no idea how long it was going to take. So that's the closest I've come to doing anything like this. And I don't, it was actually two I didn't finish. Oh, do really? Yep. There who's, were t- who's, did uh, you know? Mark Scobie. I still have the audio for that somewhere. Mark is a tremendous young player who plays for a uh, a growing uh, jazz ensemble in Glasgow called Fat Suit, and he also plays for a Scottish folk rock outfit called Manran. They tour all over the world, actually. Um, and I, Mark and I hung out for about an hour talking about drums, and I never, ever got round to transcribing. And the other one I did was a guy called James Gorman, who was at college with me, and James is a touring percussionist. Oh, he's okay. a, a trained classical percussionist, um, and he tour. He was on the t- at the time we spoke. He was on the tr- the tour of Evita, playing percussion oh. in the pit. Um, so I should probably dig those out and just 
um, either get approval from the gentleman and just release them, mm-hmm. or transcribe them. Yeah. Um, the the only thing about them was that they were uh, recorded in like a cafe, and right. it gets noisy. It does like background w- noise. If you're in a cafe trying to record stuff, it's basically you might as well try to be using a calculator because it's just not. Gonna uh, yeah. work. No, it's it's really not. You just yeah. Yeah, you, you clink, can hear clink, a lot. Clink, clink. Um, so yeah, we we what do you want to do with this? What what was the the genesis of this the genesis. podcast? Well, Genesis were a great band. They, they were with three drummers. Two genesis drummers. was also a Terminator movie. It was. It was a Terminator. Not a very good Terminator movie. I didn't mind it. Did you not mind I it? I did not mind it. I didn't live up to expectations. For okay. Me. Um, genesis. I'm out of Genesis puns. Okay. <laughs> Um, we just talked about this, didn't we? About we should maybe try this podcast thing. Yeah, we well, me and Chris both listen to podcasts pretty much r- almost weekly. I would say yeah, daily, daily. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we've always spoke about certain things that we've heard on podcasts. There's obviously a lot of drumming podcasts out there as well. Um, we wanted to make ours slightly different, I suppose, because. I personally feel a lot of drum podcasts can get a bit samey. It's always an interview with an artist. Mm-hmm. It's always um, that kind of vibe. Or an interview with like a drum tech of an artist or something like that, you know. There's not really many... I don't know if you know if there's any that are that are quite like this in a way. Like We don't want to focus too heavily on gear side of it though. Is one thing we spoke about. I think one of the things we've always managed to do with our social media is uh, put across a personality of the shop. Yeah. And I think this is an extension of that. So because we are a shop, we will obviously talk about gear. We'll talk about what's new. We'll talk about what we like. We may do interviews. We may talk about events, that kind of thing. Yeah. It's like a catch-up. A bit, yeah. It's kind of like the way I've always saw this is a bit like a, a live video but not a live video, if you know what I mean. Okay. Like, uh, so it still has the personality of a live video. Yeah. It still has the gear element of a live video, <laughs> but there's also a bit more personal stuff as well. For those that, th- that might not know, um, for the last five years or something, we have done a live video on a Friday at 5 p.m. Give um, or take. Yeah, <laughs> give or take. Um, but yeah, that's been a, a thing. We a weekly live video where we catch up with all the all the gear. It was like, it, it, this, it started out as... Five things at five o'clock. Is that how it started? Yeah, I so always wondered. This is a question I've been burning to ask for so about a year. Yeah, it started like five things at five o'clock. So um, five at five or something, we called it initially, where we would, there would be five members of staff. Each member of staff would pick an item. We would talk about that item live on Facebook. So Seems, seems quite daunting. Yeah, it, w- it was initially, but also full of banter, Yeah, as you can imagine. That's the one thing I've always liked about when Paul used to do a lot of the videos in the shop. Like Tony, because I know this from Tony. Tony, who works here, told me this that everything was like one take, and it was like, "Aye, that'll do." Oh yeah, and brilliant, and that's what I enjoy about it because it's like you don't really get a time to think about it; you just no. need to do it, and that gets you the best stuff. Totally, totally. So, so yeah, I think that's what we are trying to do. Yeah, we might get it right, we might get it wrong. You, you listening will probably tell us. Yeah, people are quite good at that. Yeah, I can't wait till the first comment is just. <laughs> No more, please. Yeah. Why are you doing a, a podcast? That'll be the question number one. Uh, <laughs> Said <did> Paul. <laughs> uh, is it free? To, can I get, uh, like, can I trade in something towards the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will give you money to stop podcast. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's what we want to try. Um, hopefully it's successful. I quite like the idea. It's a, a, a kind of spare time venture for us. Not that you and I have much in the way of spare time. No. But spare time. What, <laughs> what is this magical sorcery? Uh, so yeah, you know it's twenty to seven on a Tuesday after work. Um, so yeah, we thought we would give it a shot. Yeah, why not? Um, so we have some notes that we're going to talk about, and we'll probably talk rubbish. So yeah, I think nine minutes and forty eight seconds is enough for people to realise that we're going to talk about rubbish. Yeah, probably, if they've not already switched it off. Yeah, totally. I um, think if they've made it this far, like... Yeah. Continue well on, brave warrior. It only gets downhill from here. Um, uh, so yeah, 
Um, my first note was what, like what's happened in the shop this week, but given that it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> no, stuff's happened. Stuff happened. We've got Matt Garska. Yes, we do. Um, that was a pretty, uh, pretty cool announcement. He's, I think he's all but sold out at this point. Oh, really? Wow. Well, oh, we've was sold quick. quite a few already. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to probably help me out here. Okay. I don't know ashamedly enough about Matt's playing. Okay. I know that he plays for a band called Animals as Leaders. That is correct. And it's quite, he's quite the drummer, I, I believe, from what he, I've watched anyway. He's very good at swinging wood around. Right. Um, Giggity. <laughs> uh, Tama artist, but he's also going to be here with Mino. I, I, <laughs> I made the noise as if I was going to say something and I hadn't. I, I got nothing. He is going to be here with Mino. Um, he has just released new hi hats, new signature hi hats. So uh, they are called Equilibrium hi hats. Uh, off the back of, I think last year he brought out um, the Equilibrium China. Uh, so, and I believe them to be uh, they're part of the Byzance range. And like his China, they have holes in them. Um, which will sort of let the air escape and make the symbols a little drier. So I, I, I'd hope that we would have had some in the shop, but we don't at the moment. Um, I don't even know if they are um, in the UK, actually. Um, so, yeah, he has just brought them. So that will be, uh, no doubt, be uh, a tour uh, to support the, the launch of that. And, um, yeah, and I think the, the band are also playing around the UK round about the same time. Oh, are they really? They are. They're playing in Glasgow. Ah. Um, I think. Do you? One of our customers was actually um, talking about going to see them. I think they're playing at the garage. I can't quite remember the date. Um, but yeah, uh, they are. They well, are playing. Is it the same date? No, no. no I think. I think it's maybe like four weeks before. Right. Okay. Um, so he's getting like a, a preview. Almost of how Scotland. Sorry, I think the gig is four weeks before the clinic. Right. Okay. I think he's playing in Scotland in August, and we have him in September. Right. Okay. I think is the way it's going. So yeah, um, but yeah, he's a very very talented man. So it's going to be very exciting. I think we've we've kind of limited tickets again. Uh, we're doing about fifty tickets. Short and sweet. Yeah, we did that with Mike, eh, Mike Johnson, and which sold out in a hot minute. Uh, um. It sold out really quickly. Like, redonkulously quickly. Yeah, uh, like three days, two days. Yeah, it was something like that, yeah. But Mike's a really cool guy. Like, we went out for dinner with him, and he was just... He was a very personable person. A personable person? Is that a phrase? I don't know. Um, but Mike was great. Mike just kind of took the time with everyone. He got to know everyone. Um, and anyone who's been around Mike Johnson for that long will know that he's just got such an infectious energy. Yeah, I was really jealous because I didn't get to go. You were gigging, weren't you? I was. I was out playing, um, and I would have loved to have hung out. We hung out a little bit when he was in the shop. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I would have loved to have hung out a little bit more. See, you got... I would say you almost got the better end because you got to see him actually play. Oh, you didn't, did you? I didn't, no. So that was a kind of... That was a to and fro between me and Chris. So Chris missed the hangout, but I missed the gig. So. It was amazing. Was it I? It was I. Uh, very, very good. He's a very, very good communicator. He's a very, very good player. Very, very good teacher. Very funny. Oh, he's hilarious. Yeah. Um, it was kind of everything that you would want from a clinic. Totally. Do you know what I found the weirdest part, though? Like, is, <laughs> is hearing Mike Johnson swear. It's like hearing your <laughs> mum and dad swear for the first time. Yeah. It's like, this isn't right. See, because on his YouTube videos, he's very... I am Mike Johnson, and I am politically correct. Um, but, like... I suppose it's the same as with a lot of guys on the road. They're just they're just dudes at the end of the day, aren't they? They are. Um, he was hundreds of miles Checked. away from home, missing his wife, missing his dog, mm -hmm. um, you know, not teaching. <clears throat> he obviously wasn't at Mike's lessons. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, they are very, very... That's one of the, the great things about this job is you get to see, <coughs> excuse me, just how normal they are. Yeah, they're just a lot of them are really down to earth. Yeah, which I like a lot. Um, Chris Coleman was the same. He was great hang. Man, Chris Coleman is unreal. That boy can eat. <laughs> yes. He, he <laughs> likes a curry. He does, yeah. And fish and chips. I think it was the first thing that he got. That's right, yeah, when Paul picked him up. Yeah. 
That's right. So yeah, Matt will be uh, touring to support his new uh, his new Equilibrium hi hats. So they're um, part of the vintage line. Excuse me, I'm we're, I'm drinking juice. Uh, they're B twenty bronze, sandblasted. They're soft, deep, dark, and they're dry. There is the the mine I'll speak. They've got holes, extra holes in the bottom, so that will let everything move really quickly air wise and be really dry. So I'm looking forward to hearing them. It's some of that Animals as Leader stuff's bonkers. It's mental. I know, was it the first few albums that they programmed the drums? Oh, did they? So wow. they had a live drummer had to come in and learn the parts that were programmed. Man. Yeah. Yeah. But I think he must be full-time. They don't have a bass player, that band, either. Do they not? No, well, it's two guitarists. Right. And so a so customer was talking to me about, uh, about this on Saturday. I think it's on track. That would make sense. Yeah. I guess music that kind of complicated would probably need to be on track. Well, there's humans playing the guitar parts. Oh, yeah, I know, but like, they'll probably be playing the, like, a click. Yeah, it'll be that. clicked, but I think I mean, a human could probably play it. Oh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that a right. human couldn't play it. Yeah. I mean, a, a monkey would be, a like, weirdo amazing. somewhere that is obsessed by learning to play five rhythms at once. Probably. Um, which is way over my head. Um, I wonder, though, how if it's got like it's going to have to be exactly the same every night. And I wonder if a guy was playing that or a girl was playing that, what that would do to the music. If it would open it out a wee bit. How do you mean, like if if? Well, if it was just a bit, you know, if they had too much coffee that day and wanted to rush, and you know, like normal. Oh, people. you mean like the bass player? Yeah, yeah if the bass right, player okay, was playing. Had a bass player. Yeah. Right. Okay, I'm with you now. That's maybe questions we could ask him. It is, yeah. Um, what's it Excuse like to play? Because the guitarists, I think they use like eight string guitars and everything's tuned all wonky and it's going to be pretty mental. Yeah, I would imagine so. So yeah. yeah, there'll be some good questions to ask. Oh, definitely. I know a lot of our customers are big Animals as Leaders fans. So yeah. That should, that should be pretty, pretty cool. Um, so that's the next clinic... Oh, no, it's not. That's a filthy lie. Craig Reynolds is the next How clinic. could you forget about Craig Reynolds? I'm sorry, Craig Reynolds. Shame on you. I know. Um, again, I don't know much about this guy. I never got to see him the last time he was... Well, he went to Leeds, didn't he? He did, yeah. So I got the, the privilege of both meeting and seeing Craig play. Man, Craig is loud. Really? First and foremost, Craig is a loud drummer. And he has potentially the loudest snare drum I've ever heard. It's a Tama Bell Brass oh, okay. with, with brass hoops. Wow. It is. It screams. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a picture of him playing it and there's an Evans heavyweight on it. I think so, yeah. As well. Yeah. <laughs> Which will kind of double down on the heavy. Yeah. Chevy um, to the levy. <laughs> like. um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. Do you know, I will say, man, he's a really nice guy. He had so much time for everyone. Great. Um, he was just up for hanging out. It was really cool. Um, what I liked about his clinic performance in particular was that he just kind of... He didn't really go into a lot of technical terms. I sometimes find when people get too technical at a clinic, it kind of goes over my head a little bit. Okay. Like, Craig just turned up and played the drums, and he's like, man, this is this is how I did it. And he's a monster. He's a really mo- he's a re- a really monster. He's a really monster. Um, and Did he's great. Have you heard his podcast? I haven't. No, the no, Downbeat podcast. Is I brilliant. haven't. I, I, I need to check this out because I think... Does Mike Johnston have one as well? Mike, he'd done one with Mike Johnston. Uh, yeah. Mike Johnston also has his own, <coughs> the Modern Drummer podcast with Mike and Mike. Because he announced that he was doing the tour on that podcast the day before we actually released the date. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, so I've not, I've not heard it yet, so I'd like to hear it. Do you listen to Straight From The Path? Um, I've listened to a few songs. Okay. Um, they are powerful, <laughs> is what I will say. Okay. Um, but Craig's their touring drummer. Yeah, so, that's right. Is there um, a is there a studio drummer? Uh, I don't know actually. Okay. Again, if Craig's listening to this. He's probably like. Yeah, he will correct us when he meets us or or kill hopefully. us. I mean, it's a, it's an honest mistake. If it's not even a mistake, it's just a question. Just it is just a question. <laughs> take take that, Craig. Oh, he's played for Def Havana as well. And, um, I've just done a quick search of who he's played for. Um, Def Havana are quite good, from what I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, he's f- 
fairly in the metal world then. Yeah. Uh, Big Dave knows him. Personally? Uh, like, I th- Big Dave told me, Dave who works in the shop, uh, told me that he was on a tour that Craig Reynolds was tour managing another band. Uh, and he very briefly met Craig oh, years wow. ago. Yeah. Cool. That is cool. Yeah, it's quite cool. Um, that doesn't surprise me, actually. Yeah. Because w- Big Dave... <laughs> Big, we love Dave. But it, it, he'll, he'll have, like, the obscurest connections. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if Dave knows the touring drummer from Frankie Goes to Hollywood or something. He probably had a pint with him, probably. Yeah, because yeah. they've been on uh, the Monsters of Rock tour and the guy just happens to be there playing for someone else. Yeah. Um, for <coughs> Excuse me. For those that don't know, our Dave plays for the Choir Boys, who are uh, an, a, an English rock band um, made famous in the sort of 80s and 90s. Um, and they, they still tour quite a bit, and Dave is their touring drummer. Well, he's actually their recording drummer as well, because he did the last album. That's right, yeah. Uh, it was all blues tracks, I believe, down in the famous one in the where Oasis recorded, Rockfield in Rockfield. Wales. Um, so he went to do that and tours with them on and off. So, yeah, um, Dave is, a, is a, a resident rock star. That's what he gets called when he walks in. Mm-hmm. And he's always called Big Dave because he's a big, muscular surfer dude. He's, he's a handsome boy. Yeah, I don't mind admitting that Dave is a big, <laughs> handsome lump of a lad. Um, so yeah, but he has really obscure. And ladies, he's single. He is single. Um, so yeah, well, if he knows Craig, or if he's met Craig at least, mm-hmm. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I wonder who else Dave knows. We should save. We should actually interview Dave. I think interviewing Dave would break the internet. <laughs> but but as if he doesn't work here. Okay, right. Like interview him like he's just the drummer in the choir boys. Actually, when I did those interviews, I did one with Dave. Did you really? I did really. So there is a print interview somewhere of me and Dave having a chat. That's brilliant. It, it, it was great um, because his advice is super sound. What is it? What did just he say? Just like all about what to do to get gigs and keep gigs and all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, because he's played with some. De- he's played some decent gigs, man. He's yeah. played with the Union. Um, he's played with uh, Thunder. That's right, he depth depth, for Thunder. He depth for Thunder, on them, which is just bonkers. Um, did he not learn all the songs on the flight to yep. the, the cruise? Yep, he That's did. wild. Yep. So he's got some pretty solid and sound advice mm-hmm. um, for how to, to keep these gigs, how to get these gigs, how to keep these gigs, and how to play them. Mm-hmm. So we should probably actually sit down with Dave and have a chat. I think that would be a great idea. We'll put that in the book. Let's put that in the book. Yeah, we for should put next month's episode. Yeah. Um so we should probably go around <laughs> all the, the drummers only guys, including all the guys and gals down at Leeds. Yes, we should do that. Um Yeah. Uh Gordon will be great to interview. I think, yeah. Like what? Ask him questions about bearing edges and tension rods. What's your favourite packing material, Gordon? <laughs> Mine's bubble wrap because it makes noise when you pop it. Exactly. So yeah. Um, so th- those are the n- the um, the two clinics ca- coming up. So Craig Reynolds is sold out twenty second of August, and then literally like four weeks later, we have Matt Gartska uh, on the twenty fourth of September. A month and two days later. At the time of recording, there are still tickets left. I don't know when we're going to put this out, so there may not be. There is a very realistic possibility that this comes out after the clinic. Probably. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, we've, we do have more in the pipeline, but I'm not going to talk about them. Great. That's that's, that's very um, inf- informative. It is informative. It's just watch this space. Yes. Uh, one may or may not be in Leeds. Ooh. Do you know what I think my favourite part of this so far is? What? As if we... Either because knowing us, we'll forget we've recorded this, and we'll forget about it, and we'll come across it in two years, and we'll be like, "Huh, <laughs> do you remember that? Time? Remember that time we did that?" Aye, yeah. Um, let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> let's actually remember to do this. Talk about leads. Talk about Leeds. Yeah, because that's one of the, the newest things within the, the company. It's a huge deal. It's we like, opened another shop. We did. When other drum shops are closing, we're just like, take that, world. Yeah. 
<laughs> I wasn't expecting you to say anything there. <laughs> so, if you find yourself in Leeds, there is a purpose-built drum shop. Yeah. Under the Drummers Only banner. Hello. Uh, we have uh, three wonderful members of staff down there. Uh, Jake Brooks Bank, who is our store manager. and uh, is a lovely fella. Nah, don't like him. No? <laughs> okay. I'm joking, Jake. Um, he has a very um, storied career in the music industry. He's worked in shops. He's been sales reps. He's worked uh, as a buyer, and now he is uh, running our secondary branch. So he's a great asset for us. We love him. He's very, very smart, knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, a very welcoming lad, makes a mean cup of tea, uh, plays some great drums. He plays for a band called Out of Time. They are a pop-punk tribute band, or covers band. So yeah, that's a brief rundown of Jake. Bryn Jenkins, who has the most Welsh name... But he's not Welsh. Brindlewald. Brindlewald, because he's magic. Um, graduate of Leeds College, I believe. Plays for a band called Caro, C-A-R-O, which I think are only... They are baseless as well, I want to say, but he'll probably correct me the next time I see him. He'll drop kick you. Probably. Play. What are you talking about? Or he'll just use his, uh, a spell, because yeah. he's Brindlewald. <laughs> We've been talking about Harry Potter today. Um, so yeah, Bryn is a, a lovely young fella um, Loves his drums, knows his drums, knows his gear um, Very, very warm Very unassuming lo- young chap Very, very, well very warm, did you cuddle him? I did <laughs> like, gives a mean Ooh, you're so warm When you've done a four hour drive and you get there for half nine in the morning some, <laughs> Yeah, true so, Sometimes a Bryn cuddle is uh, A bruddle A bruddle is exactly what one needs <laughs> <laughs> What is happening? I have no idea uh, and Katie, uh, Katie works for us as well. Um, I'm really sorry, Katie, but I've forgotten your th- your your second name. Great, Bullock. That's not. Oh, there you go, Katie Bullock. See, someone's paying attention. Someone is paying attention. Um, Better employee. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and Katie is a uh, again a, a graduate, I think, of of Leeds College. Uh, she's doing her masters there just now. Uh, plays in a metal band. Plays some mean drums, man. Yeah, chasing dragons. Yep, she plays for them. Um, they are touring a lot. Um, she likes to thrash them. She can play well, man. They, they she, all, they she all plays play the twos well. and fours very well. Yeah, um, takes no prisoners with that double pedal. Uh, and she, you know they're great. Welcome a team. They know what they're doing. They know the drums. So if you're down in that area, go and see them, guys. Go and pay them a visit, or even just phone them. Yeah. Just Sometimes I like to phone Jake just to tell him I don't like him. <laughs> but then take it immediately back. But you've got your fingers crossed behind your back. I do, yeah. Sometimes when Jake phones, I stop and he gets me on the phone. He's mean to me. Okay, wow. You heard it here first. You did hear it here first. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I'll, I'll answer the phone and I'll, I'll be like, drummer's only, Adam speak. And then before I even get finished, Jake's like... <laughs> 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 so, in our tensions... Yeah, this is great. Sales. Sometimes when I when I go to talk to him, it just goes. <laughs> yeah, I think he does that to everyone. He does. Um, I guess that's he not has, to customers. No, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, not that we know of. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, it's situated in the Holbeck area of the city, which is about ten minutes walk from the train station, which is in the city centre. Uh, it stocks all your favourite drums, cymbals. Wing nuts, drumsticks. You know, it has everything a good drum shop should have. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes it has us. Sometimes, yeah. A we, cameo. We Did we not do two shifts together down there? Like we did in two weeks apart or something. We did two Mondays. It was just you and I. You drove and then I drove. No, because I think it was only the one. Was it just one? I think it was just I think it was supposed to be another one. Maybe it was Dave I did it a shift with. Yeah. I can't remember. It's but it, I, I, so I, I love working down there when we go down because everything's new. And that sounds really, really dumb and obvious. But what I mean is that, I, you know, we don't know the customers yet because mm-hmm. it's we've not been open long enough to have regulars like we have them here. Yeah. I that, think there's a few people who oh, stop by more Yeah, often yeah there are a few regular customers, but we obviously don't see them so much. Uh, certainly not now that it's, you know, rotors have ironed themselves out a wee bit and we don't have to be down quite as much. Mm-hmm. But uh, it is great when you go down and you're meeting new people all the time. I think, though, and this is going to sound totally stupid, but I think one of the coolest things is seeing a customer from Glasgow in the lead shop. Yeah, I that's, that's pretty great. Cool. 
That yeah. is great. I think one of the first customers through the door was Martin Johnston. It was, yeah. Um, Martin's been a long-term customer of ours, and um, he was on tour with Vakovi mm-hmm. and stopped off to say hello, cup yeah. of tea, and and get that. a piggyback from Paul. <coughs> Indeed. Um, so yeah, that is of that's that's great chat when people make the effort. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I was a few people have done it and surprised me. I didn't know they were in town and just walked in the door. I was like, hello, wow, Why, how how are you here? Why are you here? And then. Who sent you? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> I just gave a th- hello. Yeah. So yeah, that that's that's been the biggest thing for us recently over the last since what February, something like that. Yeah, it's been pretty. Do you know it's it's moved on so quick? Like yes. I think the past few months, especially since Leeds has opened, is just flown past. It's yeah. pretty ridiculous. Yeah, it it, it has actually. Um, God, we're nearly in September, so no, mm-hmm. we're nearly in August. Um, so yeah, when, I mean, when you're not wrong. We are, we are almost in September, but that's been what four months, something Three, like that. Two, yeah, yeah, pretty much nearly four months um, since we opened it. Um, so yeah, that's has gone quick, quick. So yeah, if you are, if you find yourself down that way, please do stay, hel- say hello, pop in. So say hello. What else has been happening? Well, we had a very special visitor today. We've, We've had d- two, technically, when you think about it. Yes, we have had two. The first fellow that came to see us was a guy called Dane Marshall. Now, Dane is what they call the export sales manager for Vader Drumsticks. Um, he's a really interesting chap. He's South African. He owns drum shops, but he also is the export sales manager for Vader. So he's a, co- he's a consultant, actually. I think oh, well, okay. I think that's how I'm sure that's what he said that his main position is the sort of consultancy for Vader and has been for a long time, and I think it's really cool that he has shops because he'll see it from a totally different point of view. Yeah, he'll get it from like a shop's perspective and I suppose a company's perspective. Actually. Yeah, so you know th- what that means is that he'll know what to stock because it will sell and uh, people want it versus what's cool and new. So he'll know ahead of time, you know, if if there's things that his customers may like, he'll be able to try them on different things, or he'll have a really strong uh, knowledge of the catalogue. Yeah. Where, you know, some places might not get obscurer models, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. But he was lovely. His visit was very brief because he had to get to the airport, which is unfortunate because I would have liked to pick his brain a wee bit. But um, it was nice to to meet him. Um, Vader have just released uh, the new Classics line. Mm-hmm. Vader Classics. Have you tried them? I have. I've tried the 5A and I, I really like it. Yeah, I tried the big bands. They're really great. I don't tend to use a stick as heavy as that um, because I'm a little weed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I've got little skinny <laughs> weedy arms and I can't really uh, play. I'm so weedy. Yeah, so I, I use slightly lighter sticks. Uh, I t- if I was playing Vader, I would typically use the 8A. Oh, because the weight's great and the tip's great, but the big bands are just a little bit thicker than that, and they felt lovely. Brilliant, yeah, good. They felt really nice. Yeah. Um. So the the classics are a throwback to how they are first started making sticks way back when. Um, they're sort of classic dimensions and weights. So it's you know a classic five A, a classic five B, a classic seven A, that kind of thing. You know. So, um, there's six models in total. We've got them all. We do. We got them all. Um, it was Pokemon. We've caught them all. Yep. Um, so yeah, um, they're worth a ch- they're worth a shout. They're very good. Vera, I feel like, are the kind of underdogs of it all mm-hmm. in Stickland. Um, they make some great products, man. Yeah, some great stuff. I used for the longest time. I used Vera Universal sticks. Oh wow! There you go. Those are chunky fellas. They are chunky but funky. <laughs> <laughs> um, why did you switch? Um, I felt after a while that because they were so chunky that I wanted something just a little bit lighter. So you weren't making as much noise? Yeah, because I was loud. Oh, yeah. Still am loud. I've been told <laughs> that I've been loud. Even just when I'm not playing drums. Shut up! Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, so I, I went from the Universal and then went to... I'm now currently on a Vic Firth 85A. Oh, okay. That's the same size as the 8A Invader. Mm, Invader. Well, it's like 
point five millimeter millimeters apart, but yeah, the re- it's in the relative ballpark size. Millimeterly millimeters. Yes. Can I get that in writing, please? Yes. You okay. Can. Thanks. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> so okay. yeah, yeah, they're they're roughly the same size as the Vader Eight A's. Right. Um, they are nice sticks. Yeah. The eighty five A. Um, they're they're kind of like the same size as the Pro Mark five A. Oh, okay. It's Pro Mark five A's. This is really nerdy, but Pro Mark Five A, the traditional or the, the the sort of standard Five A that they make, is slightly thinner than most other brands Five A. Mm-hmm. Then the Rebound and Forward Five As are like the same size as every other brand's Five A. Oh, okay. So they have two weights of Five A. They have thirty-seven different Five A Pro Mark. That is mental. It is mental. I think Liam counted them up one day. Um. So yeah, there's thirty-seven variations of a Five A drumstick. Wow. Man, it works. People buy them. Yeah. People buy them. I use the Promark Acid Jazz, and I'm going to pay for that. <laughs> yep. As soon as Paul hears this. Yep. Be Acid me. Jazz. Yep. Chris fact, as as soon as most people hear this. Yeah. I mean, like you, even like before I even knew you, Chris, it was like you were known as the Jazz Guy. <laughs> <laughs> One goes to college for four years, <laughs> develops a nickname. It was four years. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I did a jazz music degree, hence the name Jazz House or the Jazz Guy <laughs> or Jazzifer. I've had all sorts of variants on jazz something. It's four years worth of education, but a lifetime worth. But, oh, I mean, it's, it's paid for itself over <laughs> and over. It owes me nothing. It owes me nothing. It owes me everything. Everything. <laughs> what was the first pair of drum sticks you ever, you ever used? Uh, I, I think it was a pair, believe it or not, of Nova 7A, but you have to remember I started playing drums 25 years ago. That's almost as long as I've been alive. Yeah, <laughs> so it would have it, it would have probably been, well, it was definitely whatever my school had because that was where I played drums for the first time was in school, right. in music class, in first year, on day one of first year. Wow. And cool. the strange thing was my old man was a drummer and had tried to get me to play for years and I just wasn't interested. Mm-hmm. And then on day one of school, I sat down and played drums. I was like, yeah, this is the business. Yeah. Hit a brother up, teach a brother. Did so you feel cool? Uh, I felt great. Yeah. And then I went home and I asked my dad to teach me and I was rubbish. Not that I'm much better, but it took me two whole days to learn to play the basic rock beat. Like, actually, I've, wow. n- I've never been very good at coordinating myself. Um, so it took me. That 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 still stands true. It today. does. <laughs> Walking in a straight line is difficult. <laughs> I've only just my passed arms my arms want to move. I've only just passed my driving test. That's true. Um, so yeah, congrats. Uh, thank you. Um, so what? Have, and then it would have been whatever Dad had. Yeah, but that was ages ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually small note, small trivia fact. Paul sold me my silencer set for my drums at home. When he worked in McCormick's in Glasgow. Wow. Yep, and he had long hair. Really? Did long he? hair, don't care. I can't envision Paul with long hair. Uh, he did. Um, and he, yeah, he sold me my silence. Well, he sold my mum and dad my silence, I said. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I have this really strange memory, and I'll probably laugh at this, but they used to have, I went, McCormick's was huge. It was over three floors. Mm-hmm. And sometimes the drums were on the ground floor, sometimes they were on the top floor, sometimes they were on the basement, in right. the basement. But I remember them being on, uh, when we bought the silencer pads, they were in the basement. But they had this really massive Arbiter or, uh, auto-tune or Omni-tune kit. I can't remember what it was called. But there was this um, Arbiter with a drum brand and a, a distribution brand. And this kit, you could tune with, it only had one tension rod and it would tune the head. Wow, cool. It was really weird. And it had this eight-piece kit set up. And I was the customer that we all hate. Oh, no. I without any permission, just sat behind this drum kit and started playing it. <laughs> and then, miraculously, Paul ended up with a phone call, which meant he had to leave the basement, which meant we had to leave the basement. Uh, I feel that someday McCormick's heard the drums and was like, go and phone Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Get like, that wee guy out of there. <laughs> pretty much the size of it. Because I didn't even, I wasn't even like, hey man, can I play this drum set? I just sat down and started just playing started it. started wailing on it. Yep. Um, which now, having been part of a drum shop for a long time, is realises is maybe not the coolest move. But that's so interesting to me because, like... I, I mean, I was, like, 12. 
Yeah, but like now you're like the manager of like Paul's drum shop. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's mad. It is really weird. It's great. I love it. See, one of my favourite things is to look back at like chain of events right. of how things have happened and if certain things hadn't happened. Maybe so, and from that day, <laughs> you were destined to be the drum shop manager. Um, yeah, it's just all very strange. But yeah, um, this is a weird tangent. Where did it, you, uh, we were talking about drumsticks. Yeah. Um, so I can't remember what the first pair I ever bought were, but I distinctly remember having a pair of Nova 7A. Right. What was your first pair? <laughs> My first were pair they of SpongeBob sticks. sticks. No, what, what were they? They were. Uh, actually, I might have got this wrong, but I think they were a pair of drumsticks that someone got from a hard rock cafe in wow. America. Yeah, and so I just wailed on those for a while. Yeah, yeah, paint and everything went all over my hands, and it was great. I don't think I ever had a pair of hard rock cafe sticks. No, no, they're terrible. I feel like. I'm, I I want to go back and relive the novelty drumstick. You do? I've never had it. I mean, I think I might get a pair of the light-up ones, the fire sticks. Oh, I had those. I got those for college. But for, one time, for realsies. Someone bought you a set? Or no, you I, bought a I, set? I, I, I went to the shop and went, I'll have one, please. Um, in this shop. W- why? <laughs> I know. I asked myself <laughs> the same question. Uh, I think in my college, we were all put into bands and we got put into 70s bands. Like so, with the theme of the bands, right. where like you had to play songs from the seventies. Um, Did you have to play them in the dark, and that's why you bought those sticks? Well, I bought them because I thought they would look really cool on stage, forgetting that the stage has bright lights and you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, it just I mean, looks like I was swinging about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they are very seventies, though. They are. Did so they break? Uh, no, surprisingly not. But I did drop one. Did the battery stop working? A little bit. Ah, oh, that's a shame. And I tried to change battery mid song, and you know, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> because I could actually, you did that on the stage with a camera, dude. So I can imagine that you, you would <laughs> yeah, actually try and do that with true. the drumstick. That's true. Um, yeah, it's a funny thing. We all go around the houses with drumsticks. I've talked to, to customers about this loads that it's great experimenting, but inevitably we all come back to like a 5A. That's true. I started off, at my, my teacher, um, Scott Cowie in college. Oh, yeah. No, um, Scott. He. Uh, I think he, he either played with two Bs or he said, try a set of two Bs. So I just thought, okay. And then, like, for a while, I was walking about, like, gorilla hands. I mean, because I had, like, I just used two B sticks all the time. I think that's where I got the universals from, right. eventually, because I thought these are maybe a bit too gnarly. And then I switched mm. to the universals, and then I thought, no, these are crazy. Like, ball, ball tip and all that. Yeah, and pitting just, your heads. Yeah, like, there was just, like, dents for days. Ali Richardson uses two Bs. He does. He's a monster. He's crazy. Yeah. He's a scary monster. Yeah, it's very good. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, man. So, like, I've done the whole weird ball tip thing and then d- your heads get pitted and all that stuff mm-hmm. inevitably come back to the regular acorn. It's d- tried and true. Yep. Everybody loves it. It works. Um, so, yeah, fear of just... Oh, and mine old drumsticks are a thing as well. Yeah. Now, those are great too. Mm-hmm. I've tried those. I tried the 7A hybrid. Do you try them like on a pad or no, on I a gig? No, I gig them. Oh, you gig them as well? Yeah, yeah, and they were great. They Probably. held up really well for 7As especially because they're a little bit lighter, but um, I didn't want to play with 5A. I just wanted something that was close to the weight that I normally use and that's the closest that they make. Yeah. I think I will have to take a pair out on a gig. Yeah, I do it. I've not actually done it yet. Th- they're really, really well made and I don't know why that surprises me. Yeah. Because Germans make things really, really well. Yeah. But, it, it, you know, they don't feel like the hickory is cheap. They don't feel like the production or the finish or anything like that has been scrimped on at all. They're really well made. Mm-hmm. And the price point's great, like ten fifty. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant because they're like a pound cheaper than everything else. Mm-hmm. They're not limited models, obviously, um, because they, they couldn't, you know, they're not going to take on, well, they're not really going to take on anybody to try and get market share or anything like that. But it's just a little, you know, yeah. you buy a minor symbol, you can get a minor sick. Yeah. You know? That's why the foundry reserves come with a pair, isn't it? Uh, indeed. Free, free gratas. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're worth checking out as well. Definitely, um, yeah. yeah. They do some maple models if you don't want them to be too heavy, but mm-hmm. you still want them to feel um, full in your hands. You know, yeah. um, SD1s and 2s and 4s, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a few hybrid models in there as well, isn't there? There is in the Hickory line, but not in the maple line. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, 5A, 7A, 5A, 5B... And then they've got some jazz sticks. 
which everybody would think I would use because <laughs> I'm the jazz guy, but apparently not. But you do use them. I don't use the jazz sticks. Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's succumb. <laughs> Hedging your bets. Totally. Um, no, I think like, I think a lot of people get put off by symbol brands sometimes making other things other than symbols. Mm-hmm. So, like in the case of Mino, like they're now branching out into sticks, and I think sometimes well, Zildjian do it. Yeah, Zildjian do it exactly. That's that was going to be my my counter argument. Okay. Um, because yeah, because the sticks genuinely do feel really nice. Yeah, yeah, like they do. Some people get worried when brands that are known for one thing branch off into another thing. I'm expecting you fully when you return from Mino because Adam is going to see the Mino guys. Whoop whoop. Um, that you are a convert to Mino sticks and symbols. You think so? I do think so. Uh, and that you'll have gone full German. Adam's buying Sona drums as well. I am. Um, because they're brilliant. Um, but no, you're going to Minel. I'm going to Minel. Are you excited? A little bit, yeah. Uh, you and Jake are going to, to going to see what it's all about. What it's all about. Yeah. Do you know, do you have an itinerary? Um, we do, I believe, um, the good man Joe, mm-hmm. Joe who works at Minel. Joe Whitmore. Joe Whitmore. Shout um, out. Shout outs to Joe. Um, yeah, he's got a plan, an itinerary for the two days that we're there. Um, I think we're going to go and see some symbols getting made, I would assume. I'm pretty jelly. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous. I missed out on Istanbul. I missed out on Mino. But you saw Zildjian. I did see Zildjian. I yeah. did see Zildjian. Oh, but I've not on. seen a man hit a symbol with his hands yet. Zildjian really? don't hand hammer. It's just everything's machined. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Did we not talk about this? No, Zildjian don't hand hammer, man. Wow. Okay. Everything is machined um, for consistency. Oh, well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes perfect sense. It makes sense, but it also, I think I like hand, hamster, uh, hand, 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 hand hammered symbols. Hands um, hammered. Hands hammered. <laughs> <laughs> hammered by Hans Zimmer. Yeah. It's like, mm, no, that was lame. Never mind. Moving on. Anyway, um, yeah. Well, the, their whole, Zildjian's whole thing is that they are trying to evolve the symbol making process. Right. They want it to be, uh, they want it to evolve with tech and, and with all that stuff moving on. They want to try and do it to get the same results, but much more consistently. It's really, really difficult to get staff. Man, if you've ever been in a foundry, it's hot. Mm-hmm. It's hard work. Like moving symbols around is not an easy job. And I could totally understand like, like why people wouldn't want to do it. Yeah. You know, if if they have a choice to do different jobs, it's it's pretty pretty um, labour intensive. Um, standing in front of a kiln for mm-hmm. ten hours of your day is is, is tough, man. So yeah. they years ago stopped doing it, and the whole thing. When we were there, they were like, "Would you want a guy who has a hangover on a Monday hammering your symbol, or a guy who's leaving early on a Friday to go on holiday with his family hammering your symbol? He's he's thinking about other things." Or do you want a machine to do it that'll do it consistently? Well, it's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? Kind of. When they present yeah. it to you like that, and mm-hmm. you, you've you heard Constantinople's, they don't sound... They sound amazing. Yeah. You know? So, But yeah, I, I, I can imagine mine all be great, getting to yeah. see the foundry and <coughs> all that stuff. I'm excited about it. I'm really excited about it's your f- it. Is it your first trip? My first proper trip, yeah. Oh, cool. That's quite... Daunting. That's rad, man. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. Looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to be um, filming everything. Everything that, that, of course, they allow me to film. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble and no, film no. things that I shouldn't. But no, they'll tell you though. Yeah, they'll usually like in, when we were at Zildjian, like can't film this. Mm-hmm. You can take pictures and film everything else, but you can't film this. Certain things like that. We we weren't allowed in the melting room. <coughs> right. There's only four people know the the secret sauce. See, <laughs> really? there's only four people know the metal compound that goes into making. A, a Zildjian cast symbol. That's crazy. The four people plus the two Zildjians that own it, Craig and Debbie. Right. But there's only four four gentlemen in the factory that know what the the, the breakdown of the metal is. What goes into it. Yep. So they don't let they shut the door like when they're melting. Honestly, the shutter comes down and all that. You can't. Nobody gets to see it. Not even the factory staff. No. When they everybody knows when they're melting. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty lock and key vibes. You know. Do you think it's the same with Iron Brew? Uh well, they've changed that recipe, haven't they? They have, but I mean, it's still a secret recipe. Yeah, don't travel on the same plane and all that in case the plane yeah. goes there. I don't know. Like, KFC. Do you think it's the same though? Like with all of them? What if, right? Hypothetically, what if 
everybody from Zildjian, KFC, and Iron Brew were all on the same plane. That sounds like the start of a joke. Like, well, if let's hope the plane doesn't, you know, like go sideways. Everyone's safe. Yep. To breathe. Um, what do you hope to learn from Mino? <coughs> what do I hope to learn? Well, I've always been very intrigued by the Byzance range. Right. So I'm curious how the Byzance range came about. Hmm. What made them want to make Seven Shades of Dark? Yeah. Who was talking to me about this, that the brilliants are actually darker than the traditionals? Are they? On their scale of darkness, the traditionals are first, I think. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. May it have been Liam. Liam or Paul. Can't remember. Oh. Uh, as, uh, at the moment, to me, it's unfounded. I need to go away and research it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, Liam won't have said it Yeah. without researching it or understanding it. But Yeah. Yeah, apparently... Um, the uh, yeah, apparently the the brilliance are dark. I did not know that. Neither See. did I. And that's just like a small sample of the information that I'm hopefully going to learn. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if you'll if you'll see percussion. I think so. I, I would think so. I might even see the sticks being made as well, possibly. That'd be ace. That would be really cool. That yeah. is really cool seeing drop sticks being made. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've seen. Uh, do you know there's a video on YouTube of Vader sticks being made? Right, and it is quite. Yeah, Quite I got to see Vic, Vic getting made. <coughs> That's pretty rad. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope you get to see that. Yeah, I hope so too. Cool. I mean, if we do one of these again, probably not long after I'm back, then I'll be able to tell you all about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think my plan is I'll I'll see, obviously, what Joe's got planned for us all. Um, I mean, obviously, one of the main reasons I'm going is to get content for the shop. So, um, So whatever I don't talk about on this... Um, I'll no doubt will be spoken on a video somewhere. Cool, somewhere online. Um, I would imagine this would be like for like the behind the scenes of what happened on the way there, while we were there, all that kind of thing. Yeah, the journey, the banter. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, you got to go and sit in the pit last week. I did. Yes, with a good friend of mine. Alan Dale, yeah. yes. So for those of you who don't know Alan Dale, Alan Dale is a monster. He's like a monster. F- like from Monsters, Inc.? Yeah, like, so, like... Like um, Sully? Yeah, he walked past Sully, actually, in the, the movie. You can just only just see it. He's seen got cut. Right. He had, a, he had a big song and dance number. Make him sing, make <laughs> him laugh. <laughs> Sorry, Alan. Um, yeah, so uh, I got to go and see Alan play. Um, Alan is currently the uh, touring drummer for The Bodyguard uh, musical. Uh, so he was playing in the pit for that, and he um, very kindly had us along. We made a little video. Um, Alan went through what he uses on the gig, um, but he also went into stuff like... This was slightly different from the rig rundowns that we usually do. Um, so Alan went down or went through his rig and then he also went on to talk about how he got this gig and like kind of steps people can take to keep a gig like that um, because playing in a pit is no easy feat and it's a bit of an obscure experience yeah it's very weird it's really weird and I think it can differ from show to show from production to production because Alan to let everyone understand Alan was in a room on his own like a, in a drum booth um, and it, all he had really for company was a, a television feed of the MD to keep him right for everything. Obviously, he had all the band and he had the cast, or at least the main cast in his in ears. Um, but that's it. So I can imagine it can be a pretty kind of lonely, yeah. lonely kind of life, I suppose. Yeah, man. If you're doing it five nights a week, six nights a week, it can yeah. be tough, you know. I mean, obviously, you can speak to the cast and all that in between, like the break and all that. But I mean, like when you're actually playing, I think that's one thing I would find really quite challenging because I'm so used to creating music and being able to see the other musicians I'm making the I music with. I wonder if it would let you or teach you rather how to properly focus. I suppose it would. Like, I would try and do it and not take my phone in. Yeah. I don't know how long it would last, but yeah. I would try and do it that way. Yeah. The, my, I've got very limited experience of it in the ensemble. I was in a booth, but 
it wasn't closed away. It was with like the 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 ensemble were round about me, right. So I was like in the middle of the ensemble, but they built a booth for me. If that makes sense, yeah, with okay. a screen and all that. Mm-hmm. So I could hear the band live mm-hmm. as well as in my ears. Mm-hmm. So I've never done it and been completely isolated. Right, be okay. very strange. Yeah, and it was quite bizarre. The room was only just big enough for his drums and Alan and yeah, me. Yeah, I've been in it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's tight. It's tight. Hot. Yeah, it's yeah. really warm. Yeah, yeah. Because at first, um, Alan was wearing like a, a proper like surfer dude like vest, mm-hmm. and I kind of laughed at first. But by the end of the first act, I was kind of like, man, I need one of those. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, sweaty work. Yeah, he was like, this isn't just so I can move, but it's also so I don't overheat yeah. when I'm playing a gig. Yeah, I, I, it's. I mean, it's a great. He's amazing. What a player. Um, and it's great to see what skills you need to learn. Yeah, to, it, to go and do it. It was really interesting for me, and I didn't know. I learned a lot about Alan watching it because he done, and I didn't know this. He does a lot of studio work as well. Yeah, he spent yeah. a lot of, like in the first, like you said, in the first six years of his career, a lot of it was in the studio. Yeah. So I suppose in that kind of way, he's used to being in a room on his own. Maybe. Yeah, it's certainly teaching him that skill. Yeah. To be able to go and do it later. Mm-hmm. You know. But he also went into things like you know his experience prior to all this. Like in the studio, kind of prepared him a wee bit, or he took his skills from being in the studio into the pit because there he was in a room on his own. Um, yeah, stylistic he, things, eh? Yeah, like he had to learn a lot of styles because um, obviously on any musical you have to learn, you have to be pretty versed in all styles of music. Yeah, because you can change literally within two bars the style of what you're playing. Mm-hmm. You know, you could go straight up funk to all of a sudden a swing number yeah. or. Um, I kind of there, uh, so. uh, and there's some tunes on those shows that do it within the same song. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like right, within right, a couple yeah. of bars of uh, each yeah, other, yeah, they, so. they've changed. It's pretty, pretty gnarly. Yeah, and you got to you know your brushes, a little bit of hand percussion. He's even playing electronics. He is. Yeah, he's, he's using very minimal electronics, but it's there. Yeah, it's still needed. So you would still need a working knowledge of it. Yeah. Um, to be able to just do more than turn it on. Totally. Yeah. You know, he probably had to load the samples. Yeah, probably, yeah. I don't know that they'll they'll turn up preloaded unless he's taking the gig over from someone else. Well, I think from what I saw in the pit, I think that the, he was using a, an SPDSX and I think that was the band, the, the, the productions. Right. SPDSX, he just more or less had to know how to work it. Yeah. Um, it was the same with the drums as well. The drums were the production. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, all he had to bring pretty much was cymbals and his pedals. Mm-hmm. And that was basically it. Everything mm-hmm. else was pretty much provided for him. Yeah, nice life. Yeah, it's not bad. That's what he said. Like, um, obviously, I don't want to give too much away, but I mean, the video will probably be out by the time this comes out anyway. So he he said it was nice to kind of have somewhere to go and not have to worry about loading in drums. And mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. just once it's in, it's in for a while, and then that's it. Yeah, turn up to work. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just move my microphone a little bit. But yeah, he's a he's a lovely dude, and a very very talented man. Very well. He taught me years ago. Um, he taught a whole bunch of people, as you'll find out. Um, you know, there's some pretty, pretty big names there. Mm-hmm, yeah, the guys that we heard some pretty big gigs. Um, so yeah, he's just a, a, a lovely dude, really well respected. And mm. you know, I think when he first moved to London, he was doing something like eleven shows at once. He was depping. Yeah. On an obscene number of shows because he can read everything. Yeah. He, he can read really well, so he would just basically. You know, sit in the pit for a couple of shows and then let them go. Yep, pretty much. Pretty rad. It's cool, yeah. Um, <coughs> I mean, he also went into that saying, like, in a lot of these productions, you basically get one or, if you're lucky, two rehearsals. Sometimes you might not even get a rehearsal. You just need to know the, the chart and just walk into it. Yeah, he had done that tour before. Right. That, this isn't his first time on that tour. He'd done it before. I'd seen him do it previously. Right. Um, So he knew the pad well enough to probably go in and just knock it out without really worrying too much about it yeah you know? um and i think it, for for a lot of that circuit it can get a bit like that you know mm-hmm. people move from show to show and then end, end up back on different productions and that kind of thing mm-hmm. um so they know the music really well yeah you know um so yeah yeah i did the smallest the closest theater run i've done was like six shows or something like that mm-hmm. And what I learned doing that, or even though it was like an amateur production, what I learned doing that was by like show three, you pretty much know what you're doing. Right. I think anyway. Maybe that's just my experience, but 
by the third show, you've run everything. You've firstly, you've run the music. I don't know how many times because you, you and I have both done a tech day, mm-hmm. and it is br- <laughs> that what a roast. Yeah. What a roast! You uh, can be playing four bars of a tune and then stop not, for half an hour, not to be repeated. Yeah, like they're they're tough days. Tech days. It's, it's a long day. That I think, I think that's a test in itself. Mm-hmm. A tech day. Um, but I think by sh- my magic number for me is three. Once you've got to show three, I think you know kind of pretty much what's going on. Yeah, I would hope so. I would yeah. hope so. So a matinee main performance, next main performance, kind pretty of. much. Yeah, that kind of vibe. Yeah, I mean a lot of those guys end up. They know the pad so well that they don't even read it. Yeah, well, that's what Alan was kind of <coughs> like. He he kind of knew it to the point where he had the music there as a reference rather than a necessity. I saw him do Wicked. Oh, wow. And the bass player didn't even have the pad as the reference. Seriously, he wow. He knew the pad inside out. He knew when he had to change to upright, when he had to play electric. He it was pretty mental. Yeah, that's, that's bonkers. It was bonkers because <laughs> it gave me the fear. Yeah, like it would. What if you have a brain fart? <laughs> like you just don't <laughs> know what you're doing. Ah! What what key am I in? What you know what I mean? Like yeah, it was pretty scary. But he just he just knew it. Do you think he'd be on that? Oh, he must have been on that production for a while. I would think. Yeah, I think so. Like he was reading a book between scenes. That's bonkers. Yeah, it was pretty savage. That's... You know, What's it? What, so, have you sat in, in a lot of pit situations? I've sat in a bunch of times with Al. What's the craziest thing you've seen in a pit situation? Um, oh, now you're asking. I don't think I've seen anything. To, I mean, watching Murdoch McDonald play the percussion pad for Wicked was something to behold. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if anybody's been in our shop, the office space that we are currently sitting in was about the size of his percussion rig. He took up about the same amount of time. He had three pads on three different stands at three different points of the percussion rig, so he didn't have to move his music. Wow. It was crazy. (laughs) (laughs) It was like, I mean, the poor guy, it was like watching someone do a workout (laughs) because he just didn't stop moving for like the first 90 minutes of the show. Wow. It was unbelievable. He must have been knackered. (laughs) And he did this every night for, you know, a year and a half. That's bonkers. Wow. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Because he's, hor- I mean, he's, am- he's amazingly talented. Yeah. Like, it- and to watch him sort of run around. <laughs> just this tiny like little circuit s- training. Tiny little <laughs> Scottish guy, really well spoken, just running around in a circle, hit, you know, <laughs> from from hitting timpani to goat's feet to uh, f- frame drums to xylophones to all sorts of mental things. That's insane. It was amazing to watch. That's that's. I don't think, but I don't think I've seen anything bonkers happen. Like, I haven't seen anybody fall asleep, or I haven't seen like music drop. Right. So no, I don't know what the craziest thing is. But watching Murdoch play percussion on Wicked was something to behold. You just, as an audience member, you just have no idea what's happening under the stage. Yeah, it's crazy. When you, especially on a show like that, because that was rammed every night, that show. They were yeah. sell-out shows everywhere they went. So they were in the Kings, which must hold 500 people, maybe. So mm-hmm. just 500 people blissfully unaware of whether the percussion What's section on? is one dude. Yeah, totally. I think Alan doubled on some percussion on it as well. He would do some shakery things and all that. Um, yeah. And he had... The, the first thing he hit where he, he had to stand were two... M- 20 inch Viennese orchestral crashes, mm-hmm. you know, the proper hand held orchestral crashes mm-hmm. was maybe the loudest thing I'd ever heard in my life at that point. Oh man, it was pretty loud. Alan hits drums as well, man. he hits them hard. I he didn't quite give me enough heads up before he started <laughs> playing one of the songs, <laughs> and I had a big 20 inch <coughs> as a Zildjian projection crash right next to my cost. face, and I didn't quite get my in ear in. Right as he just right at the tickly bit. Do you know that he, he's broken a snare drum, hitting it? Like he's broke. Like how do he you broke mean? the shell? What? How he, he hit it so hard for so long that the shell broke? Wow! It was a twelve-inch Black Panther, and he actually broke a shell. <laughs> that gives that gives you an indication of how hard he hits the drums sometimes. Yeah, this boy hits drums hard. He does hit drums hard. Um, one of the funniest things I've ever seen in the pit as an onlooker, I was doing percussion for a very, very amateur when I was still learning in college. 
and uh, the ba- it was a, a musical. I think the musical was called Aida. And uh-huh. it was all, I yeah, can't yeah, yeah. even really remember what it was about, but I just remember it, one of the most like emotional points in the musical. <laughs> 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 the bass player's hand seized up because he was ready to go for the next song and the bass player's hand seized <laughs> up and he just hit the loudest G, <laughs> like G note. It just went... <laughs> and, it, and like his hand seized up and he couldn't do anything about it and like his loop pedal also stopped working at the same time oh. so it was just a ringing G and he tried to like hold the strings and all that but it was just like the the moment of like uh, I love you <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant I have had I played a show and Keys 1 went down mm. main stage went down on Keys 1 oh, no. for the entire first act of the show Jesus Christ it's college productions, man. Yep. It happens, you know. Um, but I'm trying to think if, like, anything's fallen, if, like, if I've ever had music fall. I remember playing uh, a club and we had a, a singer just start with the band and iPads hadn't really hit off. Mm-hmm. So she had a massive book of lyrics. Oh my God. And knocked it over. As we started Mr. Brightside. And it was just as the verse was to start. So she not and she knocked all this music, all these lyric sheets all over the floor. <laughs> I was just kinda going, What do I do now? So I sang the whole song. You did? I did, because I, I sang backing vocals in the band. Right. So we couldn't we had started. Uh-huh. We couldn't stop the song, so I sang the whole song. It was right. not great. No. <laughs> Was it was it brutal? <laughs> <coughs> it was passable to a very 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 drunk nightclub at two a.m. Oh, okay. Well, that's not too bad then. No, so but it wasn't like someone's wedding. No, no, it wasn't anything like that. Um, but yeah, she knocked. I mean, like, just I'm talking like forty sheets of paper all <laughs> over the stage and all over the floor of the club. And folk are just going, "What? What's going on?" Like, did she not use it like in a folder? Like, I but she knocked her stand over, <laughs> and yeah. it, I think she had had. Like, she'd taken out the ones she needed to sort of just quickly change or something. I can't right. remember how it happened. But yeah, n- all over the floor. Ouch. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> it's like, what, what? If I hadn't sang, if I'd, like, what would you do? What would, would you just happen? play the verse of Mr. Brightside round and round instrumentally as she <laughs> feebly <laughs> fumbled through some, some. To try and find it. <laughs> yeah. So I just sang the song. Um, tack it, do it. There you go. Yep. Not, not only does he play jazz, <laughs> he also sings. Sometimes. Sometimes. Um, so, yeah, that's about the weirdest thing that's happened to me. There you go. Yeah. I think we have I think we might have covered everything that we wanted to cover today. I think so too, yeah. Um, how long have we... Uh, it's an hour and seven minutes. Well, there you go. Um, so, yeah, um, I don't know that there's anything else we need to talk about. Is there? I don't think so. Is there anything you want to talk about? Probably not related to this podcast, though. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this was number one. Hopefully we do number two. Maybe, maybe the only one. <laughs> maybe. We'll see. Um, we will pr- I'm thinking about how we put it out to the world. Um, so, maybe SoundCloud. SoundCloud might be a shout to start off. Possibly. Yeah, because uh, you've got to, you know, stump up for things like Apple. and. Yeah, I think there's like a, I've not looked into it, but I think there's a way, like, you need to go through, like, you need to have a certain amount of bandwidth and mm. all that. All that fun stuff so, that we'll yeah, soon I, learn about, no doubt. So uh, we'll probably start with SoundCloud. So if you have a, if you don't have a SoundCloud, you can still listen to it. And we'll, we'll probably embed it on the website and on the Facebooks and... Yeah, I think um, if we, if this becomes a thing, we'll probably end up having a section for it on the website, I would imagine. Yeah. Um, yeah. If there's anything that uh, you guys want to know about anything really drum shop related, let us know. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get some dudes in to talk. Yeah, that would be quite cool. I would like to have, maybe even when Craig's here, we might be able to do. Yeah. Are we oh, something? sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. Maybe, um, Just while he's here. Yeah. It may be difficult during shop hours, but maybe if we can catch him for like about half an hour before his clinic or something. Yeah, yeah. We could do that, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, going forward, other guys, maybe other local guys, that kind of thing. Sure, yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, to find out there. But there's a couple of people I think I would like to have on. I would like to have Alan on. I yeah. think Alan would provide a lot of information. There's only so much you can get from one small video. Yeah. So I think... 
I think it's really interesting, guys. I think I'd like to have Rich Cass. Well, Rich Cass would be great, yeah. Yeah, I think he's great. Um, and he's doing something really unique. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would like to just, like, you know, his drum interpretations thing that he's yeah, doing. Oh, yeah, it's brilliant, yeah. Uh, so maybe talk to guys like him if he's up for it. Um, uh, just, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And, yeah. You know, if there's anything else you want to talk about. We might do subjects, like next one we could do hybrid electronics or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, cover drum heads or something, yeah. you know. Because there's only, like, I feel like there's only so much you can really say every time about, like, here's here's a new set of drums. You yeah, know? I, I like, mean, the information is finite. Yeah. But... I guess we can have an, well, not an opinionated section of it, but you know what I mean, we can, what we think about X, Y, and Z for the the, the work and stuff that we do, what gear we use for work. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, for other gigs and whatever else. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. I would like to also do like a questions section where we like pick, if people ask us questions, we like pick a couple and answer them, and kind of mm-hmm. like go like in depth with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd so, be cool. Um, yeah, so just drop us a line if there's, Excuse me, I'm fighting off a cold. Um, drop us a line if there's anything you want us to talk about. Sure. Follow um, us on all the socials. Yes. <coughs> um, check out the website for clinics. Um, we still have tickets for Matt Garska. Um, yeah. Um, and until the next time, we'll probably see you on a live video. Probably, yeah. Um, if there's any drums that you need, if there's any mm-hmm. symbols you quite look fancy to look of, mm-hmm. if there's any pedals that you've been thinking about for a while, um, if you want to try some new minor sticks, yep. if you want to try um, the new FP9 by Yamaha, mm-hmm. we've got one of those in. Vader Classic sticks we talked about. Yeah. Um, basically anything, guys. If you want to check uh, the website, the website is always open 24-7. Mm-hmm. So um, hit us up. Have a look on there. You can find some great deals. And yeah, we'll no doubt see you for the next one. Sweet. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.